What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the show. So I recently did a video where I was talking about the projections for COLA for 2025. Now I wanna talk about the calculations. How are they calculating COLA? And what metric are they using? This is very important. I'm not gonna give you all the details. I've done a detailed video on this, so if you want to find that, I will post a link at the end of this video so you can check that out. But I just wanna go over why COLA doesn't keep up with inflation. So that's what we're gonna focus on in this video. But first off, if you guys can do me a favor, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell notification, and then click all. By clicking all, you'll get notified anytime we post a video. We do daily videos here, so by clicking the bell notification, clicking all, you should be getting updated every day. And just a reminder, thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. And if you'd like to follow me on Twitter and Threads, you can at the TEC Show Live. Now, all of these uh, info cards, I'm calling them social security info cards, I'm going to post these on Twitter. So if you go over to Twitter, you'll be able to uh, either follow along or you'll be able to have that information so you can uh, look at it at a later time. Okay, so let's go ahead. I wanna show you this information that we have here when it comes to the uh, cost of living adjustment. So when we're looking at the calculations, Social Security's uh, cost of living adjustment, COLA, are calculated based on the average inflation rate during the third quarter of each year. All right. So, and I talked about this in a video that I uh, previously did where I was just kind of talking about the fact that they're using July, August, and September. Those are the, the three months that they use, and that's how they're getting that, that calculation for COLA uh, for, the next, for the next year. So in this case, it would be for 2025. All right, what they're looking at, they're looking at spending habits. They're using the CPIW, and they're looking at spending habits. Okay, so COLA uses a consumer price index for urban wage earners and clerical workers, which may not accurately represent the spending habits of Social Security recipients. Okay, so why is that? First off, why are they using the CPIW? Because what does it say? It says for urban wage earners and clerical workers. So you're talking about people who are actually in the workforce right now. That is what they're using. That's the metric that they're using to calculate COLA for people who are mostly retired, right? You're receiving Social Security benefits. You might be working part-time, but you are, in most cases, you're on a fixed income. And they're using the calculation for people who are actually in the workforce. What's the problem with that? Well, if we go here and look at number three, CPIW primarily reflects the inflation experienced by hourly workers who typically have different spending priorities compared to retirees, such as more spending on apparel and education, right? So if you're, if you're, wor if you're in the workforce, you're going to need to buy clothes because you have to go to work every day. If you're retired, the demand, the need to buy clothes is not the same, right? Because you don't have to buy new clothes, or let's just say you work in an office and you wear a suit and tie. Well, that's a, a big expense that you have to, I mean, you have to buy these suits and ties. If you're retired, you might need to, you only need maybe one or two suits. If you're a guy, if you're a woman and you have blazers and, and things like that, you, you might not need as much because you're not going to be going out every day. Okay, so that's one thing. Then education is another thing. Once you get to the point where you've retired, are you really thinking about going back to school? Mo most people aren't. Some people might. They might want to go back to school. But most people, they're not thinking about, if they're retired, they're not really thinking about going back to school. And so, and then to even to go to a step further, when you're looking at different things like gas, when you're working every day, that gas expense is something that, that you have. That doesn't reflect when you're retired. Some people who are retired, they drive very frequently. I know I'm retired now. I don't drive as much, not half as much, not even, not even a quarter of the, the driving that I did when I was working. And so that's something else to consider. So why are they using the CPIW? I have no idea. They need to change that metric, okay? Now, what has been talked about, and this has been talked about in Congress, they've been talking about why don't we use the CPIE? That's the CPI for the elderly because that would reflect the spending habits of retirees 
more closely than the CPIW. Okay. And it says retirees generally spend more on health care and housing, areas which may see different inflation rates than those measured by the CPIW. Okay, health care, housing. Just think about this. CPIW, if you're working, you're in the workforce, especially if you're younger, you probably don't own a house. You might be living with friends. And so your housing costs generally probably isn't that much. Your health care costs, you're younger, you're in the workforce, you're probably, your health care costs probably isn't that much. And so that's why using the CPIE, which looks at spending habits, you know, it weighs the spending habits for health care, the spending habits for housing, it weighs it more heavily. Okay, so let's continue here. So change is needed, definitely change is needed. The method used for COLA calculations, while straightforward, may result in an adjustment that do not match the actual inflation experienced by Social Security beneficiaries. And so that is very important. So if we're using a metric that doesn't match the spending habits of people who are receiving Social Security benefits, why are we using it? And so, uh, as I stated, you do have some Congress people out there right now talking about this, saying, you know what, we need to change that metric from the CPIW to CPIE. I know in the Social Security 2100 Act, they want to address that when it comes to changing from the CPIW to the CPIE. Now, I'm not going to tell you that it's going to be a drastic change, but over time, the CPIE would better reflect people who are receiving Social Security benefits. And we know one of the problems right now when it comes to the cost of living adjustments that you receive every year one of the big problems is it doesn't keep up with inflation. We're seeing that right now. Right now, the last CPI score that came out was 3.5%. The COLA for 2024 was 3.2%. Inflation right now is higher than that cost of living adjustment. That means your money is not, doesn't go as far. And so they really need to make some changes, and they actually need a boost to Social Security as a whole. They need to do a across the board boost just to catch people up because there was a study done and I can't remember where the study, I, I know I saw it on Motley Fool, okay? But I can't remember who did this study, but they went back to 2000 and they compared your purchasing power in 2000 to 2023. And they said back in 2000, People's purchasing power was $500 more per month than the purchasing power that we're seeing in 2023. Okay, so that should tell you something. That shows you that the cost of living adjustments that we've been receiving all these years for the last 23 years, they haven't been keeping up with inflation, and your purchasing power has dwindled by, I think it was $515 was the exact amount. That's crazy. When you think about right now, you have Congress people, some Congress people talking about cutting some of the Social Security benefits. Just think about that. Your purchasing power is $515 less, and you have Congress people that are talking about we need to make some cuts. Okay, and that's $515 per month. So you can see back in 2000, people who were retired. They had a better experience financially with the Social Security benefits that they were receiving than people right now in 2023. So this is a huge problem that needs to be addressed, and we'll have to see if Congress actually moves forward with some type of legislation. It is an election year, so you do hear a lot of talk about Social Security, but will they actually move forward with some type of legislation? That's something that we're going to have to, to follow and see where it goes. But I want to know what you guys think about this, so let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more, and I'll talk to you in the next one.